is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. You all ready for this? Mm -hmm. Dun 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 dun. No. no. Y'all, y'all, just this stop. This is a sham. That's, that's how that went, Michael Dean. And thank you, Adele, for that beautiful song. Welcome to DBL. It's Monday, November 15th. I'm Jeff, here with Al and Tori. Everybody's gone. I already said hello, and they just shut it I off. Just, I, I feel like we're ready to start the week now. I feel like you should call, call me every Monday and just and say hello <laughs> and hang up. Was, that's all I want. It was somewhat like creepy and threatening it at was. the same time. It was hello. endearing. Well, Michael Dean told me, he goes, you're going to sing that when it comes back. I'm like... We're going to see how that goes. <laughs> and it went like that. <laughs> All right. Did you guys see Adele's concert special last night? She performed at the Griffith Observatory in Los Angeles. It was in front of a very intimate crowd of very famous people. Adele was promoting her new album, 30, which is all about her divorce. The night also featured a surprise proposal. Spoiler alert, she did say yes, huh? And check out how shocked she was when the lights came up to reveal Adele, who serenaded the couple. Wow, how amazing is that? Adele also sat down with Oprah. We learned some new details about her weight loss and her relationship with her father, and of course, more details about her divorce from her ex, Simon. Let's take a look. It was when I, when I admitted to my own friends who thought I was really happy, that actually I'm really unhappy, and they all gasped, like, you know, I feel like it was sort of from there that I was like, what am I doing? The same drive as staying in a relationship, even though you're not happy and you do it for the kids. I think it's as loving as doing that for the kids by leaving and, and you know, finding your own happiness so that they really know who you are. And Adele also sang a few new songs from her new album, including this song, Easy On Me. Let's take a listen. I changed who I was to It couldn't be more beautiful. I tuned in. I was bouncing back and forth Sunday night football, yeah. Al, you know. But I tuned uh, right when I flipped over. It was the sunset oh. in Los Angeles. The clouds were pink. Like the DP, the director of photography, must have been like, "Thank you," because it, <laughs> in the Hollywood sign point. is in the background. It was gorgeous, and she was fantastic. That's a really great point, and, and Jeff. You know, I was also in full football mode, so this had to saw through a a, a metal wall of football <laughs> to get to my heart, and it did. It was beautifully shot. I thought the proposal was amazing. I know you weren't sold on it, but I, it, I, I, with somebody like Adele, you forget how many songs they have and how talented they they are, and it really turned into almost like an inside the actor studio. Yeah, it did. At the, you, you know, uh, with the sit down about yeah. what her motivations in her life and their struggles and her successes have been. So I really, I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I felt like I've, you know, I don't love Joe Rogan, but I like Joe Rogan's long form interview. I like that there's some space, some time to be able to hear. And she went through the whole thing about divorce, and when she first started talking about divorce what I thought was so relatable is she said I was embarrassed I was mm -hmm. embarrassed that it didn't work out and I think so many people watching at home right now feel like they can't get divorced or separate because of the shame of that and she was saying it's so much more healthy to do that and she even met her new man Rich Paul who is a very cute I thought this is Rich Paul she met him at a business me meeting uh, he called it a business meeting at a dinner party and they've started a new love and it's just what can happen if you go through the shame you walk through it and say this is healthier for my child you got to face it. Yeah, you got to face it. I noticed something, too. I noticed her tattoo, the right, because she was singing. Yeah. She was Saturn, and she had Saturn earrings. And I was like, what does that mean? So I looked it up. I still don't really know what it means, but it says, um, it's something that it's an astrology returning every 30 years. Saturn returns oh. to its original spot. So it's supposed to bring you back to and where you were born. And this is her 30. She's 30. So between every 28 and 32 years, and she's about 33, I think, and her album's called 30. 30. So I think it's a representation of, like, wow. starting over, being Look reborn. Wow. Jeff doing a little Look research. Look at me. I dug in a little wow. bit. Man, I love that. Very nice. And what do you think, you guys, about her weight loss, what she spoke about, how she's like, it's not my job to right. make you feel comfortable. Yes. That was a huge thing because people have really wrapped Do you guys think the weight loss down. and the... the stopping of alcohol almost go hand in hand. I mean, alcohol is a lot of empty calories. You know, I don't drink anymore, but 
trust, I don't care how you handle it, but it just is. You gain more weight. And I, so I, I wonder if the weight loss simultaneously going along without drink, with, with the slowing down of drinking, she didn't stop, I don't believe. I really think go hand in hand with this kind of rebirth and of said, who she is physically and mentally and, and spiritually. And she said, which is what is happening to me now, is she didn't lose weight to lose weight. She was so anxious that she had to move her body to get some of that anxiety mm -hmm. out. I'm going through that right now. I'm working out like mad, like never before, because I'm feeling anxious and it's helping me detox. Right. So it's funny, she didn't even lose the weight to be this, you know, to look so pretty. She did it to help her body and her mind, which I think is great. Yeah, I've been saying that for a while. Have. I have to like do that. I have to work out, put some exertion, put some something in my life that I have to get over yeah. each day to make myself feel better. And it's not shaming anyone, but you can't have these conversations because people who don't feel good about themselves take it as shaming. And it's not shaming. No. Right. I'm going through the same thing you went through. I went, Adele, it doesn't matter who you are. Right. You go through this. And the way to get through it is to set some kind of goals or challenges in your life, exert yourself a little bit, and yeah. you feel a little better on the other side. Yeah, I mean, stress creates energy. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, how do you deal with this That's energy? It. Do you mute it by dumping a bunch of vodka on top of it? Or do you like literally push it off That's of it. you with dumbbells. Sweat and it it's, out. It's kind of, yeah, so everybody's kind of dealing with it in different ways, but yeah, seems to work. Good on Adele. Seems mm -hmm. like she's doing just fine. I think she's okay. <laughs> so Britney Spears, speaking of doing just fine, is finally free on Friday. A judge ended Britney's 13-year conservatorship battle. Britney posted this video on social media with the caption, finally free. She also thanked her fans who celebrated with confetti and cheers. Everybody's off on Friday, huh? Uh, outside the courthouse there. Her fiance Sam posted a video on Instagram celebrating in the car on the way to dinner, getting himself a few more followers right there. Some of Britney's fans, famous pals I should say, like Paris Hilton congratulated her on social media. Lady Gaga posted a pic from them at the VMAs writing, quote, you never deserved what happened. Thank God for today. And actress De Jamela Jamil wrote, quote, we have to protect her from the paparazzi and the tabloid media who are determined to drive her back into the same mess. So everybody's pulling for Britney, right? You don't want to take cheap shots here. It's a big moment for her. But are there any concerns, would um, you say? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and yeah. Al and I kind of spoke about this privately a little bit. I think a lot of people, and this isn't going against Britney, are concerned with sort of the her videos on Instagram show sometimes people feel that she's not like all there there. Almost like the one we just showed. Yes, and I'm not I trying to be down at it And I wanted to be like, I, I don't know. See, right. Jeff, that's the problem is we are all trying to be so to be courteous right. and, 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 and be so uh, loving that sometimes people might not get the help that they need. Britney will. Britney has enough people around her famous with money that hopefully now this will, will not happen again. Now she will. And th that should show you that even the most rich and powerful can still be taken advantage of. But I do hope that out of this Britney movement, we get something where people in the future don't feel like you just did, where you feel like you have to say, I'm sorry, I just want to make sure that she's okay. You were coming from a place of love and caring, but people will look at that as like, oh, you're just hating. Right, exactly. It's like, no, there appear to be times where she does not seem to be 100% with it, and I don't want her right. to be we taken advantage that. of. Could we pop that up yes, while we're discussing please. right now? And I yeah. just want to see that again, the video that she posted. In the green because if you're, shirt. Because if you're using this as a meme, I just got out of a 13-year conservatorship battle. Like, you use that as a meme? This doesn't really captivate celebrating after 13 years. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes, right. and I think people are concerned, and I do want to put it in context. She has an accountant that will be in charge of all her major acquisitions. So she's not all of a sudden, she can go go crazy. She has someone in charge, and she now will have people like Sam, who is her fiance, who's got her back. She can drive in a car with him now. Right. But what I will say is this. Do I think she's all okay personally? No. Do I think she needed to be in a conservatorship, and was she in abuse? Yes, and then that is an ongoing Both problem can be true. with many well yeah, said. both can be true. Absolutely. You can be mentally a little bit not all there and get some help, but you certainly don't need to be leashed like right. she was. Yeah. Well, time will tell. And hopefully for Brittany, I hope we're not talking about her. I Because I hope she kind of just goes and lives her life yeah. and has fun. And I we don't agree. More stories make some her. music once you make uh, Toxic 2. Speaking of that, it. Al, speaking of that, we got something coming up for you out there. Taylor Swift performs her 10-minute song on SNL and teases a new project with Blake Lively. We'll tell you what we know about the collab, but first... This is what I'm talking about, Al. It's time for Fact oh. or Fake News. Yay. Play along with us at home where we talk about the crazy headlines. Are they real? Are they fake? As we go to break, let's hear a little bit more, Del. Yes. The scars of your love, they leave me breathless. I can't help feeling we could have had it all. Open in the deep. 
Closed captioning provided by Uh, Jeff was just saying he would be more nervous too because so many famous people you're were cool. in the. He always does this. He says you're cool, and then he says fake news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah so uh, say, Melissa what, McCarthy is a really good friend. friend. Serena Williams is a really big uh, friend. They also had Leo DiCaprio of Seth Rogen. Um, Jennifer Lawrence is one of her close, close friends. She credits Jennifer Lawrence as making oh, she her has friends with super duper A list. I know, but she Come said on, friends. she said Jennifer but Lawrence I, I helped mean, pop her ego. I know, yeah, but I don't think. I would argue she's more famous than they are. Jennifer Lawrence? Well, she's an Oscar I, winner. Well, they get together Over oh, Adele? Adele? Yeah, I guess you're right. A global, global recognized. recognized. Yeah. Adele is like Lamar's in that like most famous 30 people on the planet. No, you're true. It's like, true. She's more global. But I will say that she said Jennifer Lawrence brought her ego down. And I think Jennifer Lawrence, who just seems like a very normal person, is probably a good friend to have because she seems super she seems normal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like I'm not crazy. So I think that really helps. Yeah, I just... I, Leo tried to be um, inconspicuous or conspicuous. I don't know the difference. Incognito. And he wore like a hat. I'm like, you're next to Seth Rogen. Like, relax. He always wears a hat. But he he looked like he was trying to like. But in, that's like, in we a, got it, a place Leo. where he can still be Leo. Yeah, just be Leo. And he's is he still considered like the young heartthrob? Isn't he like fifty? Sierra saying no. He's not yeah. heartthrob, but don't you think he's, he's such a heartthrob? He's not even a heartthrob. Yeah, he's not so She's young. You don't think he's she cool anymore? She looks like your, your granddad's cute friend. That's what he looks like now. He's, to young he's a great actor, Tarantino. He's great. Yeah. Huh? He's really great. So it's who's your heartthrob, you Sierra? That, that's that attractive, that You're is that good of an actor. You know who Dylan O'Brien is? Yeah, in the new Taylor Swift. So he's the new guy. Who's Dylan? The, the, the actor who played in the 10-minute film directed oh, by Taylor Swift. Oh, that, 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 that guy. Is What's, yeah, where's he from? Teen Wolf. Uh, Teen, Teen Wolf. Wolf? He's very cute. No, he's from other stuff, because when I saw him, I recognized him. He was very cute. Maybe we work on that soundtrack. Maybe we mix it up a little bit. Remix next week. Welcome back to GBL. This week it was full of crazy, unbelievable headlines, and we're going through them all to find out which are facts and which are fake news. Let's get started. Yes. Okay. And I've all won right. every time, by the way. Wow, a little boasting to okay. begin the day. Not in that ends today, buddy. All right, Erica Jane says she'll never remarry amid Tom Girardi's divorce. Ooh. I have no idea what's going on. I don't know the answer to that. I'm just going to be... Because I'm going fake news. I think on she's this. been burned too much by this, so she's she's going to remain married Al, to her career. That's not good for us. We should. If we're no, keep she's up really with Tori, confident, but we should I'm... take opposite answers. Let's see the answer. Yeah! Oh um, no, we're, out, that's we're not bad. off to a good start, that's buddy. Bad. Okay, we're not off to we're a good start. Don't panic. No panic. We got plenty more questions. How about this one? Drake spends one million at a strip club with Travis Scott. I'm going. Ooh, yeah. I gotta go this. There's no way, man. And it was, it was I, after that concert. It was right after Astro World, yeah. which he performed in and is being sued for currently. Yeah, I say, I say. It's All right, let's see the answer. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I just didn't want to believe it. I think he said he didn't know that people yeah. had died yet. I think they just left and didn't know. Yeah. How do you spend $1 million? That's the thing. I think regular people don't understand there's another menu <laughs> that's got like expensive stuff <laughs> on it. Another menu? Yeah. I don't, who has a mil like, I don't know. Are you constantly you making buy it the rain? Club for a million dollars? Okay. Okay. Who? Britney Spears. There you go, Al. That's what we were referring to earlier. Says making music is top priority. Pro top priority will release new album by Valentine's Day. Oh, wow. Nobody believes in Britney? No, no she do, doesn't want to. I don't think it's coming now. I think she's going to make music in the it, like her own time. All right. She's putting a well, let's check date it out. on it. Yes. Yes. All right. Wow. Oh, nope. That first one is going to be the death of us, Jeff. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm down too. So, Al, you're my hope buddy. I got Elon this. Musk told Bernie Sanders that he keeps forgetting that you're still alive. <laughs> yes, mm. I'm going not, with it. Oh, yes. everyone's going fast. Yeah. It's terrible. I actually, All right, I it seems this. like an Elon thing. I don't know. So rude. 
Yeah, just super I think Bernie just, would laugh. That's he why didn't laugh. Laughing. It was very rude. Did he was tweeted it? it very I think, rude. He's right? talked about a wealth tax, and Elon's like, oh, you're still alive? Yeah, he's been in public service for over 40 years, so shut your mouth. All right. Wow, so this fun game just took a turn. Oh, he's working for his press wow. sorry. Who's a Republican? <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> the Who frontman Roger Daltrey drags Rolling Stone, says they're a mediocre pub band. Them fighting Ooh. words. Them fighting words. And I want to see an old people fight. Yes. <laughs> they're old people now. It's just usually one punch. I thought they were friends, Pete Townsend and no. Nick. All right, let's see. Fast. Yes. Oh, no. Welcome back oh, to oh, all the things just got interesting. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Tori got clouded by the politics and she couldn't think. Uh, no. she, I was too. All good. right. We do have a tiebreaker, okay? okay? So here's our tiebreaker questions. Between you two, how many years has The Who been performing? How many years has The Who been for performing? And I would like it in the answer of a question, please. Ding, ding, ding. What is 43 years? I am going to go with. 52 years. Uh, 52? It might yes. be 52. All right, closest two, closest two. The winner is, let's see the answer. That's not the That's answer. That's not the answer at all. Well, for some people's problems, it is. <laughs> but the winner is Al. He's the closest. 57 ah, years, yes. Al. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Oh, look at that How picture. How did you guess too. that? I just knew that they were around in the 60s. So that right there, that puts us at 50-something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm He's thinking right. 1968, but yeah, I knew it was probably earlier than that. And yeah. I'm reading a book about the Beatles, and he, the Beatles and Pete Townsend were also growing, going up together. Mm. So it's the same amount of, stop falling asleep. That's interesting. Oh, you see what you did to Jeff? We need him. <laughs> you put him to sleep. All right. So remember to tune in every Monday for more <laughs> Fact or Fake News. We'll be right back. Tell yeah. us more. So in 19... Lithium batteries are what power most of our modern gadgets. You can find them in things like your smartphone, laptop, or even some power tools. So what makes these batteries so dangerous? When you throw them away, they get bumped around as they move through the dump. If a rechargeable battery gets damaged, that stored up energy inside can spark, causing a fire or even an explosion. Experts say those can be especially hard to put out because of gases released by the battery. Battery. So if you get an upgrade this holiday season, what do you do with your old devices? Officials are asking you to take the batteries out before you toss. As for the batteries themselves, you can take them to your local city-run recycling centers or drop them off at one of the many stores like Best Buy and Home Depot that offer electronic recycling programs. Plastic from the pandemic is adding to an already out of control problem. Let's connect the dots. A new report in the scientific journal PNAS says 25,000 tons of pandemic-related plastic waste have ended up in our ocean. That's a big problem for our wildlife as well as humans. The study found over 70% of that pandemic plastic eventually washed up on our beaches. So where's all this plastic coming from? Researchers say this goes far beyond your disposable face masks and shipping trash. Hospitals are by far the largest contributors due to the massive amounts of PPE they need to use every single day. And experts say a little more recycling isn't gonna cut it. They say we need a new solution for how our healthcare facilities get rid of their waste because the need for masks, gowns, and gloves isn't going away. And that is Connecting the Dots. To DBL, that was T Swift, of course, performing the extended version of her song All Too Well on SNL over the weekend. She also played the short film based on the song in the background, but Taylor isn't done yet. Today, she also dropped the video for her new song, I Bet You. I Bet You Think About Me. There you go. <laughs> And there's a question mark at the end of that. I bet you. The, I'm Ron Burgundy. Directed by co, co written by her good friend Blake Lively. There's the picture. Take a look. I don't have to be your shrink to know that you'll never be happy. And I bet you think. 
think about me. What's his name? There it is. Fans were quick to suggest that the revenge song is also about her ex, Jake Gyllenhaal, who she dated back in 2010. Please, Tori, take it away. It was fabulous. The 10 minutes was great. It'll go down, I think, in SNL is one of their highlights. Wow. And to give a, a musical artist a full 10 minutes is like a really big deal on SNL. And, uh, I just like that she's coming into directing. Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds are two of her closest, closest friends. She calls them like mom and dad. They came to her after party at SNL together. So they're incredibly close and she wanted Blake to also take off with her directorial debut. I like all of it. I think uh, Taylor has really been a prolific songwriter during the quarantine and has given a lot of people a place to go in the quarantine with new content, which not every artist has this done is from a breakup from 11 years ago, Yeah, but she you created I mean? a new it's a 10 minute new song. I, look, it had the question has to be asked. Do you think it's strange that she is still talking about this breakup? If you and I went to dinner, if we went to happy hour after this hanging out and I'm blubbering at the table about somebody I broke up with 11 years ago, once I left, would you guys not have a little chit chat like I'm a little worried about Al? I don't think she's blubbering. I think she's in trying to- 10 minutes of- First of all, no, no tears. That woman Did is- Did you see the video? There were some tears in there. She isn't in the video. I will just simply say this. She's also trying to re-record and take it back from Scooter Braun. So you have to go revisit those old songs. She might redo 1989 next. She's trying to do it all so she owns her own music. I have no problem going back to great songs. Like when you go to a concert, don't you want to hear like, don't stop. Believe it. Yeah, but then we're not at a concert. We, I, I would assume she's a young artist in terms of like she's not geriatric. She's still making new music. So why is she still make, making her old music? Because she's trying to own it. Scooter Braun doesn't own them anymore. Anymore. Yes. She's just trying to put it into her catalog. But she added new music. She added verses. She added more intel, more information. I have no problem with it. Am I wrong? More intel? Yeah. Is she part of about Jake Dylan about the scarf. <laughs> Everyone wants to know where the scarf is. Yeah. I, I, I listen. I'm with Al. I kind of went about this last week, but you know we don't need to get into the whole thing. My thing is, and again, I'm, Taylor Swift is super talented. I'm not dogging her, but when you hear Adele and then you hear Taylor Swift, hey, I'm not. You saying. said it. I felt it, bro. Well, I didn't realize what a powerful voice, and that's not a knock on Taylor. Right, it's two different Adele, voices. But, no, but Adele also is Adele, in a different, there's levels to this game, you're right. And Adele is also moving on and talking about her new relationships, and she has a little bit of heartbreak, but mixed in with some, I'm going forward with my life, as opposed to Taylor going 10 years well, back. But Adele is a belter, and Taylor is like a songwriter, piano, acoustic type of person kind of thing. So you don't get that big voice, but I know what you mean when you All hear right. them next. Me and Al will be at Adele's concert, you could. That's right. I can't come. You could be backstage with mom and dad, which is weird, <laughs> Blake Lively. And if my friend was like, hi, dad, I'd be yeah. like, dude, think something's weird. In yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back after therapy. <laughs> Maddening is it to be bumped from a flight? What can you do? A TikTok user shared air travel information to more than 800,000 people. The claim was someone bumped from a flight could get more than $1,500. With Verify, we dig into these viral claims to let you know what's true or not. So can you get paid cash if the airline bumps your flight? A bumped flight is when you're denied boarding. It happens when the airline oversells seats. This is not incidents like weather delays. We used information from the Department of Transportation and spoke with Daniel Armbruster, spokesperson for AAA Texas. It's a rare practice. Less than 1% of passengers are impacted, but occasionally airlines do have to bump passengers uh, because a flight is oversold. And that's the key component here. Was your flight oversold? So, uh, you know, weather can't uh, impact it. The Department of Transportation's website shows airlines must ask for volunteers in exchange for compensation. You can negotiate it. They may ask you if you want want uh, some vouchers, uh, things of that nature. If you do accept those things, uh, vouchers or, or any other additional items from the airline other than a cash refund, make sure you understand if there's any restrictions, any blackout dates. When you don't volunteer and you still get bumped, the DOT website shows an airline is required to compensate you after involuntarily bumping you from an oversold flight in certain situations. However, there are many situations where you are not entitled to compensation. It lists things like charter, small aircraft, and some international flights. Plus, in order to get paid, you must have a confirmed reservation, checked in and arrived at the departure gate on time, 
and the airline cannot get you to your destination within one hour of your flight's original arrival time. The money you get depends on that arrival time. Less than an hour, no money. One to two hours delayed, it's double the one-way fare up to $775. More than two hours later, 400% of one-way fare, up to $1,550. So yes, airlines are required to pay you for bumped flights if the arrival time is delayed by more than one hour. If you see something questionable online, let me know. With your Verify, I'm Erica Proffer. Are we in for a baby boom of 2022? All signs point to yes. Let's connect the dots. Analysts at Bank of America say there's one telltale sign to expect more babies next year. Pregnancy test sales are way up. They say sales have grown by an average of 13% year over year since 2020, and more babies are already being born. Researchers say births increased by 3% in June of this year. That may not sound like a lot, but it's the highest level of growth we've seen since 2013. Analysts now predicting that this is the start of the millennial baby boom. Members of that generation getting older and gaining more financial security. And for many, that means it's time to start a family. On top of that, many parents-to-be delayed having a baby due to the pandemic. With COVID cases dropping and vaccines widely available, they're finally ready to welcome those bundles of joy. And that is Connecting the Dots. Welcome back to DBL. Last year, shoppers spent $9 million on Black Friday, and scammers are banking on this for this year. It's time for a security alert, a sponsored by LifeLock. I threw an A in there. Yeah, a sponsor. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, <laughs> this is from a LifeLock. <laughs> <laughs> One Black Friday scam we want you to be aware of is a refund scam. So scammers are sending out text messages and emails saying that you are eligible for a refund on a product you never actually purchased. This scam is, this scam is, the scam is, they want you to share your credit card information. Don't put your credit card online, everybody. That's the gist of this. If your information has been breached, LifeLock is here to help. LifeLock keeps you and your digital identity secure from cyber criminals. Call 1-800-419-0131 or visit LifeLock.com to learn more. We got it. Al, right. any last words you're to champion? Don't a put your credit news. card number online. How about Factor Fake News, champion? All right. Boo. It's just all in that. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>